Hi everybody, Craig here at Stumpy Grump Scale Speed Shop. I wasn't going to do another um, update video on the AMT 55 Chevy. I was just going to wait till the reveal, but I ended up having a lot of things that I had to do and take care of to get the rear end in, um, the drive shaft, the front suspension, and the engine and transmission and stuff all in. And rather than try to explain everything in the reveal, I figured I'd just go ahead and do another update video and show you everything that I had to do with that. Oh, and the exhaust too. Oh, can't forget about the exhaust. That was probably the biggest chore that I had to do on this one. Um, let me get it turned around and I'll, I'll see, show you what I did with all this stuff. Okay, guys, so we'll start with the rear end here. Um, as you saw before, I used a, a, a NASCAR kit, AMT NASCAR kit rear end. I cut some pieces off of it to make it fit. I used some styrene tubing for this little rod over here, a little, little bar for support. Um, I used the springs from the NASCAR kit right there. I just drilled holes in there and, and got them lined up. I took some more styrene tubing and put them here, I guess, which would be where the shocks are supposed to go. But I did that. And then I just glued that piece right there. For the drive shaft, I used the U-joints from the NASCAR. Um, it spins actually. I used the U-joints from the drive shaft of the NASCAR kit. I chopped them off and I measured out a piece of styrene tubing. Once again, I used that styrene tubing and I glued them on, glued it on the ends. Then I primed it and painted it, used aluminum, and I had to grind off a little piece of the rear end, the front of the rear end here to get it to fit. So the wheels and tires lined up in the wheel well. So that's what I did there. So I used the NASCAR rear end, bit of pieces of the drive shaft, the springs, and then I made my own um, support bar and braces there. So that's what I did to get that on. For the front, I left pretty much, I used everything from the kit, even the wheels turned like the kit shows, like the kit does. But what I did, if I can pop this off real quick here. Okay. What I did is I took this piece, if you can see, I took that spindle piece and I filled in all the holes. There's three holes. I filled them all in can't really see and I'll show you on the instructions if I can yeah there's the spindle piece right there so I cut that off oh no I didn't cut that off that's that's the little pin that you get I did not put the pin in there's three holes here I filled in all the holes with some some sprue goo and I did the, all the rest as kitted. The rest of the suspension is as kitted. Okay. But by filling these three holes in, when I lined it up on the actual kit here, what I was able to do was I took this piece, this is the wheel, this white piece in the middle is what I added into it. I took, once again, I took some .020 inch styrene sheet that I have in a, a little strip here. And I took a hole punch and just punched a bunch of holes. What I got from Amazon, I got a leather hole punch for making like belts and stuff. And I measured it out. And the center 
is four millimeters for these wheels, at least the front. So I punched out four, four millimeter pieces and I glued them in. And for that, I use this stuff. This is super thin, it's like water, and it will glue your fingers together and anything else together in one to three seconds, for sure. This makes a mess, at least for me, so be careful with it. Um, but I did manage to successfully get it in there. So I glued those four circles. They're just, they were solid circles. Glued them in, waited a day, and then I drilled holes in the center of them. And those holes I drilled in the center I can't find what I did there it is let me get it up I took a metal axle from my Revell Chevy SSR kit because I've pretty much parted one almost completely out now and I just cut lengths with my cutting tool, my Dremel cutting tool. And I use those. For the hole there. And I drilled the hole. I don't know if you can see it. Everything falls off now. Big time everything's falling off. Well, geez. Let's just take it all apart. Easy enough to put back together. But there's the spindle piece. And I drilled a hole at the bottom. It probably ended up being right where the, the kit bottom hole was, but you know, I just filled it in anyway. So that's what I did there. The whole suspension, like I said, it's a it's the wheels turn, just like the kit. Now let's try to put everything back together. Okay. Got to get the instructions back out. I can't remember for nothing, and then I leave everything in the way. I just, I'm, I'm just a, a cluster mess here. Flip it that way so I can see what I'm doing. like that so that goes underneath like so and then I go to the other side and put my spindle on fortunately Slides into place. And then I'll put this piece on. Maybe. Like so. And there we are. So the metal axle is still sticking out there. So I just pop that on. And this metal axle. Piece I'll go ahead and put in there. first I 
Hard to do with the camera, believe it or not. Right there. So that's on. I just have to... Pop that in a little bit better, and the front suspension is on. And it sits nice and level. Okay, so that's the front suspension. You know, it's a little bit more than I intended to show you, but what the heck. Okay, so now we go to the exhaust. And what I ended up using for the pipes here is 1 8 inch round aluminum tubing and I used it for the pipe connecting the header to the muffler and then out the side using side exhaust on this one maybe not the best looking but it's on um, Scratch made mufflers like I show in my tutorial. And I just bent everything just as good as I can get it to go out the side. Um, I measured it three or four times before I glued it on and I still had to make adjustments and it still messed up on me. So that's just the way it goes for me. Measure 50 times and it's still not right. But there is everything the rear suspension the drive shaft the front suspension and the exhaust one thing i got to touch on again is in the engine compartment for get it set up here so you can see it for the radiator once again i use the radiator from the Revell Chevy SSR kit and to get it to fit I ground and ground and ground and ground some more I finally you can see how much I had to grind on that front part to get it to fit but it does fit now the hood opens and you know fits on perfectly so that's that. Heading into the final stretch, the final assembly, the bumpers, the lights, door handles, all that stuff. And then she'll be done. So this will be the final update. And when it's done, you'll see the reveal. Thanks for watching Stumpy Grump Scale Speed Shop. I'll catch you at the reveal.